Hi, time for today's mini lecture, and we're going to go over some of the topics for the midterm, which is coming up on Wednesday. Um, these first three are from the first, the first four are from the first chapter. And you should probably know the difference between a syntax error, the compiler catches that, a runtime error, you find that when the program runs, hence the name, and the logic error is no error message, but the program doesn't do what you want. Um, how the Java compiler works, you have to understand that you have your source code and the compiler translates that to JVM bytecode, or just bytecode. And then the Java virtual machine executes the bytecode. Uh, declaring and initializing variables. We've been doing that pretty much all semester. You have your data type, the name, the assignment operator, and some value to declare and initialize. So for example, int um, quantity becomes 42. You can also have something like, for example, float, or not float, hello, Earth to Eisenberg, double price, and then you can initialize it in a um, statement later on. Declaring and initializing a constant. When we have a constant, it's called final. So for example, final int and by convention, they're all uppercase, which means we use underscores to separate individual words. And once you set a constant, you cannot change it again. Low level um, languages run directly on the machine's hardware. And this would be assembly or, um, well, machine language. And then a high level, let's call this a low. And a high level um, needs to be translated to run on the hardware. And that would be things like C, C++, Python, Java, etc. Portable languages. Um, look this one up to make absolutely sure, but basically um, can run the same source code on multiple different kinds of hardware. Writing a comment in Java. This is the one line comment. Everything to the end of the line is ignored. And this is the multi-line comment. Between a slash star and star slash. Um, know the priority of operations. Integer versus floating point division. Ah, some very interesting stuff goes on here. So for example, if I have, let's say, oh, oh, I don't know, 19 divided by two, that comes out to nine. Why? Because when you do an integer division, integers divided by integers become integers. Now, uh, let's go into J shell for this one. I think this would be a good idea. So let's say I say system.out.println of 19 divided by two. Yeah. Now, this one's interesting. Let's say I say double X becomes 19 divided by two. What do you think is gonna happen when we get X? Is it going to be nine and a half or nine? And the answer is it's going to be 9.0. And the reason is, because we always, always, always evaluate the right-hand side completely before even looking at the left-hand side of the assignment. 
19 divided by 2 as integers is 9, and that gets promoted to a double, which gives us 9.0. And in fact, if we were to do a system dot out dot print line of x, we would get 9.0. The way to get around this problem is to use a cast. If I say double x becomes double 19 divided by 2, then we'll get nine and a half. Or I could say 19.0 divided by two or 19 divided by 2.0. Uh, yeah, I guess I should have an assignment in there, shouldn't I? <laughs> there we go. And then I get my nine and a half. Oh, hi, somebody has come in here. Um, hold on, let me stop sharing for a moment. Hi, do you have any questions? Let me pause the recording. Okay, back to this. Um, well, I'd already talked about that. Format specifiers for um, printf. Percent %d is good for integer and long integer. Percent sign um, dot 2f or however many you want is good for double. Percent sign s is for strings, although we're not going to be caring a lot about them. Percent sign c is for character type variables. You know, I don't remember what it is for Booleans, uh, but we, will, we don't need, those aren't gonna come up on the test anyway. And percent sign N is same as backslash N, which means new line. Okay, you know how to write the methods header. Um, how does addition work with strings and numbers? Well, that's sort of interesting. So for example, okay, number plus number is number. That's not, that. that's a, what if I say three plus and I add a string to it, that gives me three, five. If I have, let's say five plus three, it will convert, because I have it, whenever you have a string, everything gets converted to a string. So for example, if I say car plus three plus seven, I'll get car three, seven. But if I three say three plus seven plus cars, it's going to do them from right, left to right. So I'll get 10 because it's numbers and then I'll add on the string and I'll get 10 cars. Okay, um, trigonometric functions. Trig functions take radians as their um, input. So for example, if I want the sine of 30 degrees and I try math.sine of 30, that's not gonna give me what I want. Instead, I have to say math.sine of math dot two radians of 30. And that will convert 30 degrees to radians. And then we can take the sine and we'll get one, ha one half or as close as we can get to one half because of the way floating point works. Uh, local variables. Anything you declare inside braces is local to that block. How method calls can be nested. And usually I'll, I just do this with math because it's easier. I can say math.sign of math.square root of math.absolute value of x. So those are, I've composed three functions. I've nested the absolute value call comes first, then I take the square root, and then I take the sine of that. Um, relational operators, those are going to be less than, greater than, um, less than or equal, greater than or equal, equals, remember that you need two equal signs in a row and not equal. And by the way, I also forgot the, um, I think they're called the conditional operators. And those are and, or, and not. Uh, switch statement. Remember that each case in the uh, switch should have a break after it. If you leave off the break, the switch falls through to the next case. 
and you use the default case to handle everything at the end that wasn't caught before. If statement, we've talked about that. Oh, evaluating compound conditions using And um, remember that what we have here is and, which is and, both conditions must be true for the result to be true or either condition is true, the whole thing is true. So that's a real quick overview of that. Um, let's go real quick here and do this um, midterm sample. So is Java a low level language or a high level language? Answer, it's a high level language. Now, this is the kind of thing I love to put on a test is correct the errors in this Java program. When I'm doing this with a class full of people, it's really great because everybody finds all the errors. First error is there's no semicolon here. Um, that looks good. That looks good. Oh, no, that doesn't look good. This has to be a small m. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold, I'm going to put that in italics so we can see it here. So I'll put italics here. And, um, in fact, what did I? I'll make it red so we can see it. Okay, this is correct. Enter base, double base becomes input.next int. Well, the problem is if this is a double, then this has to be next double. Otherwise, if somebody tries to type in um, a double variable like 3.5, it'll go kaboom. Uh, double height becomes input.next double. Cool. Now, this one's a tricky one. The formula half the base times the height. And somebody will say, oh, I see that. That shouldn't be a plus sign. That should be an asterisk. And if they do that, that's so far so good. Except this is going to screw them up. Because remember, we go from left to right, and integer divided by integer is integer, so 1 divided by 2 is 0, so the area will always come out to 0. Um, several different ways to correct it. You could say 1.0 divided by 2.0 times the base times the height, or my preference would be just to say 0.5. And then here we should have a capital S system. And the area is plus area. That looks good. Input.close and oopsie, I am missing a closing curly brace there. I think I've caught all of them. Print and turn Scan is called input, input.close. Yeah, that looks good. I'm happy. Okay, what kind of error is it if you have unbalanced in parentheses? You can either say a compile error or a syntax error. Write a Java comment. Well, we know about, I already talked about that, namely. Or you could go with, oh, I keep forgetting that I'm in a word processor, not in a text editor here. Um, what does this expression work out to? Well, the fact that I have one floating point number in here means that I'm going to have a double result. There's no question about that. 
All right, so what happens first? Well, we have five times three, which is 15. And remember, multiplication and division go from left to right. They're of equal priority. So I have 15 divided by two, which is seven and a half. Seven plus seven and a half is 14 and a half. Minus one should be 13 and a half. And let's just go real quick into J shell and see if that's correct. Seven plus five times three divided by 2.0 minus one. Yep, 13 and a half. I'm happy. Okay. A is less than B and C is greater than D. A is not equal to B. Or C is equal to D. Remember, you need the two equal signs in a row. Okay, now here's a fun one. What would be the value of number after the following statements? Are actually, we've got a, a lovely switch statement here. So number starts off as one. And our character is the letter C. This case doesn't match. This case doesn't match. This case does match, which says number is 67, but there's no break. So we fall straight through to case D with number being 68 and we break out. And so the value of number will be 68. Ah, okay. This is one of these where you're gonna to have to do a little bit of work. So here are values for A, B, C, and D. And I'm going to have you plug them into this expression. Well, let's see, is 50 less than 40? No, it is not. So this part is false. That means we have to look at C and D. 70 is definitely not equal to 60. So this part is false. This part is true. And because I have an or, that whole thing works out to true and we're gonna print good. Okay, is 60 less than 30? No, it is not. Is 20 not equal to 20? No, it's not. That means it's bad. Is 20 less than 70? Yes, it is. Okay, well, this, since this first one is true, we know the whole thing is going to be true. It's an or. I don't even have to look at the other one. And 45 is less than 85. A is less than B which means I don't even have to care about C and D at law. As long as I have one of them that's true, the whole thing is true and it's gonna be good. And then, oh God, this is, this, is, this, this is one of those things where you have to know what you're doing and keep track of stuff. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to bring up this here. I can get this. I need to make this smaller here so I can keep track of things here. And then I'm going to clear my message window there. All right, so here's what I would do. Yeah, I always start with my main. So here in main, I have A, which is a seven, and E, which is a five. Now I'm calling do stuff. So here I go into do stuff and A here gets copied into this int A. That means, oops. So inside do stuff, A is going to be a copy of A and E gets copied into B. So B is now five. Now I'm going to do more stuff. And so I'm going to do another call here called do more stuff. C is going to be a copy of A times B. So C is going to be 35. A plus B is 12, and that gets copied into D. Now I have another, uh, this, excuse me, this should not be door, it should be do more stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now I have A becomes C minus D. And this A here is local to do more stuff. It has nothing to do with any of these other variables called A. So A becomes C minus D, which is 23. And I print out in more stuff, A is 23. Now I return A. So the result of calling do more stuff was 23, and that's going to go into C. So in do stuff, C is going to become 23. And then I will print out doing stuff with um, A, B, and C with seven and five gives 23. There's no return statement in here. It's void. But when I'm done with do stuff, I come back to main and I'm done. So let's go and let's take a look at this here. And let's go here and let's um, make a new, save this as, <laughs> don't want to save it there. That's, that's a totally different course. And 928. And we'll call this example.java. And let's compile it. Oh, it's example program. OK, fine. I'm too lazy to rename it. I'll just call it example. Yeah. And let's run it and see what happens. In more stuff, A is 23. Doing stuff with 7 and 5 gives 23. And that is exactly what I predicted would happen. But again, I did this. Don't be afraid. Now, I did this on the screen because A, I don't have a webcam that will reverse left and right so you can see me writing stuff. And B, my handwriting is so crappy that nobody can read it anyway. Um, but there's no rule that says you can't use paper and pencil to do exactly what I did here to keep track of all your variables, namely, you know, which, which method am I in and what are my variables? That's an easy way to keep track of it. Well, I want to say it's an easy way to keep track of it. It's a way to keep track of it. And then here in the lab portion, I'm not going to go and write this program. But that's a good idea of the kind of thing that you might be might seeing on the midterm, at least for the question and answer portion. And that will do the mini lecture for today. And what I will do for tomorrow is I will start with the um, business about arrays and references on chapter seven, because that is our um, subject for the week. See y'all whenever.